If you're a runner with access to the internet, then you are probably aware of carbon fiber plated shoes like the Nike Vaporfly. Uh, I've been obsessed with them for a while um, and I don't own some and I've been wanting them for the longest time, but the average price tag of these um, seemed a little steep for an uh, average runner like myself who is not an elite. Uh, but after some time, I finally got my hands and feet inside my first pair of carbon fiber plated shoes, the Atreyu The Artist. I haven't been running as much as I would have liked to over the past few months, and I don't expect to be my PR uh, with just a shoe. However, I am hoping to get under 25 minutes. Anything under that, I'd be ecstatic. Um, so yeah, let's give these shoes a try and let's see how the artist performs. I had a lot of fun running in the artist today, a great 5k time trial, and could not be happier with the results. Today's time was 23.16 um, for a distance of 3.11 miles, average pace 7 minutes 28 seconds, average heart rate was 185 beats per minute, and the average cadence was 180 steps per minute. Not too bad for someone that hasn't been training that much lately, and I was only about probably 25 seconds from my personal record. So I think that in a race situation, um, not carrying around a GoPro, I think I definitely would have gone a PR. So really happy and just overall, uh, if I could describe the shoes in one word, I would describe them as a lot of fun. Starting off with the best part about this shoe is the price tag. At only $100, this is a great steal. Most carbon fiber plated shoes do start around $200 and, and something like the Alpha Block Fly can go all up to $275. So you just cannot beat that price. Diving into the specs, the Artist is a World's Athletics approved carbon fiber plated shoe it's light coming in at a stated 7.8 ounces for a men's size nine. Uh, for my size, which is a size eight and a half, 
it is coming in at 7.6 ounces. Starting from the top, the upper is the same as the Treyu's base model, um, and it's a relatively lightweight, very comfortable upper. The upper also has uh, some kind of light plastic um, layer to it that kind of wraps around for additional structure. So that way this doesn't collapse on and on itself. It features a super critical EVA midsole with a stack height of 24 millimeters in the forefoot and 30 millimeters in the heel for a six millimeter drop. The Atreyu Sites claims that the liner uh, adds an additional five millimeters, giving the stack height of 30 millimeters in the forefoot, 35 millimeters in the heel. Circling back to the upper, it is a very comfortable upper with a solid lockdown. It's not as, um, it's not constrictive in any way. It does provide toes some wiggle room, which is really nice. And especially for those longer distances, um, that tends to be a little bit more forgiving. The lockdown isn't as superb as some other shoes I've had on. Um, the example comes to mind is the um, Adidas Audi Zero Audios series um, that has a really great lockdown and solid. Uh, but that said though, um, that's probably due to the construction of that shoe where this is a little bit more um, simplified and which does provide for the lightweight. Um, but it, by any means, this is a great upper. It doesn't have too much structure into it. Um, it does have a little pull tab in the back of the shoe um, so you can put on the shoe. And it is pretty um, pliable. Um, you can kind of see how that heel counter just kind of collapses in really easy. I'm curious how long that will last, but in terms of how it felt like on the run, it didn't seem to bother me in any way at all. I did not need that much heel counter support, which some of the other shoes tend to have a really beefy heel counter. And so if that's something that you're not exactly looking for, just to get rid of some of that weight is really helpful. The super critical EVA midsole feels very soft, but still very responsive underfoot. As my first carbon plated fiber shoe, I don't have anything to compare it to. Um, but from what I've heard, they tend to be snappy and you kind of go into the midsole um, and into a soft landing and it just kind of snaps you out of it back into your stride. On my first run, I didn't quite feel that sensation. However, it still was able to provide me with a very quick turnover and keep my legs moving really, really fast. As you can see, it is rather stiff but in terms of as you run, it does not feel stiff at all. Um, that stiffness probably comes from the large midsole and the carbon fiber plate. It has a decent curve, but I would not call this a rocker. The best way I can describe this is just effortless. It, it makes your runs really effortless where it does kind of have a gentle curve to it, allowing you to quickly turn over your feet. Um, maintaining a consistent 180 steps per minute cadence was a breeze for me. I am wondering if the carbon fiber plate will be feel more pronounced as I add on a few more miles. As of now, it is subtle, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I have heard that some people don't like when a carbon fiber plate is so pronounced, um, but it did the job. It helped with my efficiency. My legs did not feel tired and felt fresh the entire time. I felt like I could have kept continuing going faster with my legs if only my heart rate could have kept up. Um, Atreyu's website details the construction and placement of the carbon fiber plated shoe, and it seems to sit in the middle, which is why I maybe also didn't find it that prominent. Um, you seem to have two layers of foam, and the carbon fiber plate sits in the middle, and then you have the outsole, which I'll get to in a moment. The higher stack height didn't feel unstable to me. Um, my left foot was locked in perfectly and my right foot was slightly unstable, but I think that was just mostly attributed to how I tied my shoes, where I probably could have tied them a little bit tighter. I'm quickly going back to the upper and that was kind of 
just compared to like the Adidas Audi Zero, um, where it has a really strict lockdown where you're one with the shoe, the slight flexibility in it made it feel like I was unstable. But again, I think that was just the way that I tied my shoe down. So I think once I get can dial in how I tie my shoes, I think that will really go away. The outsole is one millimeter of rubber, um, and it is also very smooth. You get some slight, it's hard, you probably won't be able to see this on here, but it is gonna have some slight ridges on there, um, akin to the Adidas Audi Zero Audios Pro. Um, great for racing, um, as it just keeps things really, really light. I know that some shoes have a really, really thick outsole that may lead to some durability issues. Um, I do tend to heel strike and I already noticed some wear um, right there and on the kind of on the outer edges of the shoe. Despite the sleeker thin outsole, I did not have any problems with slippage. Um, I feel like I had really good traction on my run and great control overall. So no issues whatsoever with the stack hide or the outsole. I'm trying to think of some negatives and honestly, nothing major really comes to mind. I guess in terms of small complaints is just once again, having a race type lockdown on the upper right about there. Um, that would be kind of a nice ask if that's something that can develop down the line without adding too much weight. Um, while having the flexibility on the toes is really nice in general for a race type fit i do like a really solid lockdown where the shoe feels like it's part of your foot um, the counter um, i once again i didn't have any issues with it and i'm kind of fine with a basic upper i did not have any issues with heel rubbing or anything but for some people out there maybe that might be an issue i guess maybe it's a slightly longer pull tab it can be a little finicky to get your finger in there but once again i'm just kind of splitting hairs here um and then maybe a slightly well i know it'll add an additional weight but maybe a slightly thicker outsole for an additional dur for additional durability would be nice um i cannot predict how many miles this will last but i cannot imagine it being that much um, and so if they just added just a little bit more, I think that that would prolong it um, a few more races. So I think extending the life of this would be nice. But once again, very minor things. Uh, I guess one more thing uh, I can add is maybe different colorways. Um, while white is nice for summer, I personally do not like white shoes. Um, just because the midsole gets, gets so dirty. But I think that's more for daily trainers where you kind of want it to look nice. I think that in a white shoe, this will be perfect for the summer. Nonetheless, for $100, this is a great running shoe and an amazing value. And I look forward to both training in it and racing in it someday. Easily one up, if not the best value shoes that you will find. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for future videos on run shoes and some cycling.